Hi, and welcome to At BCPS In Depth. I'm Jody Wicks. Well, 2018 has come to a close. So do you have your list of New Year's resolutions for 2019? We do. It's our commitment to continue to highlight all the exciting and great stories that make up the fabric of BCPS. Perhaps you may be a part of one. So snuggle up with a cup of hot chocolate, kick back and relax, and get ready to check us out. BCPS always provides opportunities for our students to succeed, but this time it was for the young men from high schools across Baltimore County. So let's check out the Leadership Summit that they attended. Being a leader comes out from who you are, comes out from your experiences, comes out from your beliefs, comes out in the way that you see the world, it comes out from within. BCPS held a leadership summit for more than 150 young men from our Baltimore County High Schools at Goucher College. The goal is to provide leadership training and academic community building for students to help them build a pathway for success. We have amazing young people in Baltimore County Public Schools who have great leadership promise and potential. So the Leadership Summit gives us a chance to nurture that promise and potential. We know that the gift with purchase that I talk about often, it extends beyond the academics, but it goes into those experiences for our young people as well. So having them attend a conference like this where they get to talk to their peers, this is part of that gift with purchase to give them those rich and robust experiences. These young men heard from Interim Superintendent Verlita White and keynote speaker Sean McComb, who was our 2014 National Teacher of the Year and currently an Assistant Principal at Pleasant Plains Elementary School. Leadership is not about a position or a title. My lesson in leadership is that leadership is really about a way of being. Mr. McComb had a lot of very big takeaways, but the main thing for me was probably that you know, everyone can be a leader within themselves, but they also need that motivation from something else, someone, something that can drive them to be a leader for someone else and just help motivate everyone. And he's a very powerful speaker and just he's very like persuasive when he speaks about leadership. Being a leader is a lot to uh, deal with, you know, you got to uh, have responsibilities, you have to take care of other people, you just got to think about the world, just not yourself. It's not, it's not being about like being selfish. You know, it really hit me in my heart when it said, uh, when you being it, like being a leader, it, it feels right. And when I be a leader, it's like it's just me. Like it's it's natural to me. After listening to speakers, they were able to go into breakout sessions that included preparing for college, student leadership, being a man in the 21st century, and many other sessions. Kids come into high schools with. Uh, different backgrounds and not everyone is able to understand them as well as others can and sometimes it's just that extra push or extra nudge you need to give to somebody in order to have that leadership in their life. It's just that little tiny push they need. My experience uh, here was great. Uh, I learned a lot. There were a lot of great speakers who talked about their past and how, that, how their past influenced them to be successful in life and being in a time management session taught me about how I can plan out um, my day and bas basically I evaluate my success or failure over the week and how, I can, how it can improve for the next week so that I can be successful. These young men really took advantage of this leadership summit and were appreciative of the support they received. What a great program for our future leaders. And speaking of leaders, the Baltimore County Student Council's General Assembly brought together nearly 300 students recently to explore the topic of advocacy. I know that your leadership counts and your leadership matters. Keep in mind that whatever you advocate for, that's likely the direction of the system. So as a general assembly and those of you who are representing your schools, don't take this opportunity for granted for you to be able to speak up for your fellow students and your student members. So today uh, we are here for the Baltimore County Student Council General Assembly where every high school and middle school student council meets to discuss policies, current issues and how we can bring solutions to the table. And it's just such a good community and we're all like really nice to each other and we can build off of each other so like what works for one student government we can try at our school and it really helps us um, like create new ideas and find new ways of doing things that would be more effective. It was a good time. We first we went to our small groups and we did this whole activity where we how we talked to each other and 
we were kind of like a family kind of and we shared our experiences in our school and how our school runs and about ourselves. I think in many ways what we can do and what we can build is only limited by our imagination and our ability to come together to get things done. It was really cool to see our Baltimore County Executive here because once again it shows how much our voice matters. Um, Miss White said that as well when she called us our, her babies. I thought that was very nice. It shows that everyone really cares what students have to say. And also hearing Johnny O saying like you don't have to wait to become a leader, you should just go for it is really like, it helps me strive to become a better person. What you're doing now I think is an amazing step on that journey. I can't wait to see the leaders that you are going to become because I know the leaders that you already are. Making personal connections to students, parents, and staff is the key to a successful schoolhouse and community. On our latest school profile, Deer Park Middle School focuses on its AVID program and how it's preparing students for college and careers. Deer Park is dedicated, dedicated staff. Deer Park is a great place to work and learn. Deer Park is motivated. Deer Park has students that are engaged. Deer Park is energetic, fun, different each and every day. Deer Park is a awesome place where students have a voice and where we listen and hear our students with their concerns. Deer Park Middle Magnet School is a wonderful school. Our students are dedicated, prepared, motivated, mindful, and successful. We are a learning community that inspires every student, every individual in our building to rise above every challenge every day. That vision was created by all of our stakeholders. We came together because I believe in a team approach and as a team we strive for excellence in everything we do from academics to the arts to athletics. Excellence is our goal. I would like to showcase our AVID program AVID was first brought to Deer Park in 2014. AVID means advancement via individual determination. Our students have participated in college three-day simulation programs where they were members of the college student population and they received instruction from college professors. We were the only Baltimore County school to participate in AVID Day at the University of Maryland. We have a mentoring program with Stevenson University, the Mustang Mentors, which has allowed us to have a partnership where we are provided annual college campus tours and able to participate with students on the college campus, which is a big deal because we are trying to lay that foundation for the college going spirit and mentality even before they reach high school. The mentality of AVID is something that we want all students to have with their organization, with their binders, with their organization and preparation for that college going spirit. Deer Park is everything a school should be and we are working to be more. So have you read any good books lately to your children? Here's one that you may want to pick up because it takes you down the ocean. And then 20 and four would go on the side. It's not just working math problems these days for Bear Creek Elementary teacher Katie Rusky. She also wears another hat, that being an accomplished children's book author. The book is called The ABCs of Ocean City, Maryland and it's um, actual vacation. It starts off at Assateague Island, starting with A, then it goes down the boardwalk, then it goes to Candy Kitchen, the dough roller, all the way down the Thrashers, all the way down to the 11 o'clock checkout um, on you know, the next morning at 11 o'clock where everyone is exhausted from all of their fun that they had that week. As a former BCPS student herself, Miss Rusky's inspiration to write started pretty much around the age of the students she teaches today. When I was in fifth grade, uh, they always ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I always wanted to be a writer. So my fifth grade yearbook from Edgemere Elementary says I want to be a writer. And we have a family place down in Ocean City and we've grown up going down there, my sister, my family and I. So uh, it was just a really great story to be able to, you know, think about the stuff that we did growing up. And it was really nice to be able to put it into a kid's book. I'll take three activities. What was your favorite activity? One favorite. Jolly Rogers, who likes Jolly Rogers? Raise your hand. The, actually, the first time that I read it to my class, it was the exact reaction that I wanted. It was, oh, I remember exactly, I know where that is, or my family and I did this. And when I was writing it, and the publishing company even asked, like, you know, what's the goal? And it was, I want 
people and families to think about the stuff that they did. What I liked most about the book was how when, when I went to Ocean City, I got to see all the places that were in the book. It, it really made me excited, it really made me happy. My favorite thing about the book was hearing about all the places in Ocean City that I haven't been and it really makes me want to go to Ocean City. Reading the book hits all five of your senses. It's, you know, when you're reading it, you can smell the Thrasher's french fries and you can taste the, the caramel popcorn and smell the ocean and you can feel that hot sand on your feet when you're down there and feel the excitement of, you know, the drive, the three hour drive that everybody dreads but loves at the same time. So it's just a wonderful book to read with your family, reminisce about what you've done down there and all the memories that you've made. Ah, I can't wait for that warm weather and sounds of the ocean waves, but it's still winter. And that means, should I say it, snow. When winter weather hits, there are many factors that go into making the final decision whether to delay openings or close schools. BCPS is roughly 640 square miles in size and weather and road temperatures vary from one part of Baltimore County to another. That's why sometimes you notice that the Hereford Zone schools are closed or delayed and the rest of the county is on time. When possible, BCPS will make decisions in the evening so parents can make the necessary arrangements for their children. Very often when we go out at 3.30 or 4 o'clock, the precipitation has not begun. So at that point, we're looking at radar, we're looking at the forecasters, we actually get reports from forecasting agencies and this Maryland State Police. We're trying to determine whether the road conditions are going to get worse between the time at 4 o'clock when we make the determination and what's it going to look at like at 5.30 when our buses actually begin leaving the bus lot. Student safety is so very important to us, but the safety of our bus drivers is also of paramount importance to us as well. So we want to make sure that when we're making those decisions about school closures and school delays based on inclement weather, that we've had an opportunity to understand what our drivers might have to face when they're out on the road. And so considering that, we have to take into account those primary roads and secondary roads related to the Hereford Zone and in the Northwest area where the climate may be colder at times and where the conditions may be a little more treacherous. As soon as BCPS makes their decision, you can take a look at our BCPS website, our BCPS Twitter account, BCPS TV, Comcast Channel 73, and Verizon Channel 34, and also the local media is contacted. Well, that does it for this edition of At BCPS In Depth. If you have any story ideas, comments, or suggestions, contact us at bcps-tv at bcps.org. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and with the BCPS Now mobile app. Until next time, I'm Jody Wicks. Thanks for watching.